Next up, at UFC Vegas 75, we have Nicholas Dalby taking on Muslim Selikov. Nicholas Dalby, 21-4 and four overall. 3-1-1 one and one in his last five. He is coming off that close win over Warley Alves. He's taking on Muslim Selikov, 19-3 overall. 4-1 and one in his last five. He's coming off that KO win over the, now that we know, Chinny Andre Fialo. This will be another interesting fight. Muslim Salikov's solid striker. He hits very hard. He has wrestling in his back pocket if he needs it. He holds nothing back. Everything he does is significant. And he's got solid takedown defense. That's Dalby. Oh, that's who you're talking about. No, I'm talking about Salikov. Ah, you're just pulling um, the shit out of me. He's coming off that KO win over Andre Fialo where he did showcase that power as well as a whole bunch of spinning techniques. Nicholas Dalby has those weirdo breathing techniques that Jacob was just doing an impression of. You, you think he's going to pass out that he's like gassed. It's like almost like breathing into a paper bag. But that's just like whatever the hell weirdo breathing technique he does. He's a karate style striker. He stays mobile. Why? Because I went like that with my hands by my mouth. No, I was just going to. There's a lot of like. A lot of like, oh, that's what Angelo sounds like all the time when he's eating the fucking, you know, whatever. Yeah. Insert Walking here. Stairs. Doesn't yeah. matter, you know. I heard it's all you the time. Those... If you guys listen to the background of every vlog, <laughs> <laughs> are you filming? Just behind, just behind it. Anyway, Nicholas Dalby also has a traditional martial arts background. Good amount of power. He is hittable though. He gets about one takedown per fight, but like super at a thirty percent hit rate. He's a well-rounded guy. He's going to work hard, but he's not dangerous at all. And these are two guys that initially you're like, all right, Dalby's got to be the much younger guy. Let me go. You know, it's kind of a close fight. No, they're both old. Neither one of these guys are young. I think we've got 39 versus 38. They're both traditional martial artists, right? We have old school karate, old school, um, what's what's Muslims? Uh, the king Kung of Fu. Like yeah, Kung Fu techniques. And they both use those techniques, and it's very obvious in the cage that that's how they're fighting. I do have to go with Salikov here. I do think this is much closer to a 50-50 fight than these odds. I think uh, Muslim's a parlay buster, frankly, at these odds because Nicholas Dalby can come forward and can make something happen. Um, super close fight. I do think Muslim's going to get it done because he hits a little harder. He's got a little bit better wrestling, and I think he's just going to move a lot cleaner. So he's going to be the pick. What do you think, Jakey Boy, between the 38-year-old and the 39-year-old martial artists? Yeah, Dolby's a, an interesting guy because he is, I mean, he is just all volume, all pace, but people can slow him down. And it seems like anytime people want to slow him down, they're able to slow him down. If this was, if I knew that Muslim was going to come in and just kickbox the entire time because he is a, a Dagestani Russian that is a kickboxer. I mean, that's what he wants to do. He's a pure kickboxer. I think he's somebody's. I think one of the breakdowns or, or one of the uh, fights. They said he's over. Got two hundred kickboxing matches, something like that, something crazy. He is a kickboxer at his core, but he has started to use his wrestling more. If I knew that he was not going to use his wrestling at, at all, I think this is a very, very winnable fight for Dolby because I think he would be able to outpace, outpressure, get in the face, avoid the big shots, and really kind of work his the volume against a guy like Muslim who is more of the power, the big spinning stuff, the weird stuff, that type of stuff. But when people want to slow Dalby down, they are able to get to his legs, either pressure him against the fence, and then work takedowns, get him flat on his back, and he is susceptible to being controlled in those type of positions. And I've seen Muslim in his last few fights, and when things aren't really going his way, when he wants to kind of slow the pace down, when he's missing the big shots, he wants to catch a breath, he's able to get those takedowns because he does have that in his back pocket. So... Unfortunately for a guy like Nicholas W, it was fun to watch. It's wild to hear all that breathing and stuff. It sounds like he's about to pass out and die at any moment, but that's what he does to kind of pace himself. I just think that it's going to be a 50-50 fight. He's going to be working. You're going to see him have success. And then he's going to be on his back. And then the next round's going to start. He's going to be pushing. He's going to be pushing. He's going to have success. And then he's going to be back on his back. And then Muslim might land a big shot in between kind of those takedown attempts. So it's unfortunate. I don't feel great about it. You know, I don't think Muslim is a guy that's going to come in and just absolutely dominate. But I think he's going to do enough and have the timing and the takedowns to control and slow the fight down when he needs to. But if he comes in and just tries to throw volume, and, or I mean throw the big shots, and tries to knock out Nicholas, I mean there is, there is definitely a world 
control when Nicholas is able to kind of push the pace, push the pressure, wear him down, and, and, and win this fight, or maybe even find like a late TKO with kind of the volume shots. But uh, it's unfortunate. I'll probably be rooting for Nicholas live stream. We might throw something on there, but uh, I think Moose is going to play. Live stream? The fuck kind of tone was that? I don't know what that means. Well, yesterday you were on death's door and couldn't film a quick picks video, so I just didn't know where you were physically or mentally. It's been cloudy outside the last two days. I know that fucking sends you in a spiral. What is happening right now? Where I don't know where this attitude is. I don't know why. Do you know, what, I, I don't do you know, know how I, I got either. sick? <laughs> I don't know either. You know how I got sick? You're going to like this. I'm, well, I'm pretty sure how, I got you sick. You know how you got sick? No. I'm pretty sure I know how I got sick. Do you want to break down this fight and then we'll finish this and then I'll tell you right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, DraftKings, $7,000 and 9200 I think this is a super close fight. So while I have Muslim winning, the value is probably Nicholas Dalby at $7,000. I mean, that's an incredible price point for a guy that does have a path to victory. But I don't think I'm having either one of these guys in my lineup. We have 28 fighters to pick from. I'll look at somebody I'm a little more sure on. What do you think of uh, DraftKings? Yeah, I don't, I don't like either one of these. I, I think yeah. Muslim at 92 is a little too expensive. Dolby's a durable guy. Um, he's a tough dude, and um, he's got that volume as well. So I think this is a, a stay away from both sides, probably. Yeah, I uh, I tend to agree with that statement. We want picks.com. You unlock literally everything, including the safety parlay. Koala Analytics said this is a terrible card to parlay. I don't disagree, Koala. You know how hard it was for me to put together a safety parlay, and oh, I had to do a mixed God. bag of money line and prop bet. Talk about being a pussy and crying. To make that happen. We want picks.com. It's only ten dollars a month. You unlock everything, including that safety parlay, which is up eight units on the year, twenty units since we have been using it. Jakey boy, what was your story? Oh, how I got sick. Yeah, so the last like week and a half, maybe two weeks, something like that, every time I walk into my master bathroom there was like some weird smell and i could not figure out it wasn't all the time it was like some part of the days and sometimes it wasn't it was like this kind of weird smell going on that i could not figure it out so last um like last week on sunday or monday something like that i i, I cleaned my entire bathroom it was like there's something going on here where it's like something really smells in this situation yeah, i could stinks. not figure it out so i literally cleaned the entire thing and after i cleaned it i was like oh it must have just been like some disgusting i don't know puddle of whatever that was like just sitting there festering that I cleaned up because the smell went away next day smell comes back couldn't figure it out so then I was like maybe because every time the air kicked on I was that's when I was smelling it more because it was like air circulating so I was like maybe there's something like in the vent like so maybe there's I don't know maybe there's like you know, mold in the vent or something so I get up on my counter and I'm like trying to look in the vent or like smell in the vent because the air is on but it's not coming from there and then my exhaust fan I'm like, I, I think it's coming from my exhaust fan that goes outside. Like, you just on the fan yeah. on that exhaust outside. And then I'm listening, and I can hear stuff in the exhaust fan, and it's like birds or something. I take the exhaust fan cover up, and I put my face there and go, and it's the most disgusting smell uh, in the entire world. Died. Of no, it, it's got to be bird. Like there's just birds living in the exhaust fan, and, and that was like on Wednesday, like Tuesday or Wednesday, where I got this whiff. And then I like literally took an Amazon box. And I'm like boarding up this fucking thing, so it's like hitting me in my face the rest of the day. Like my nose was hurting and stuff from this smell. I, uh, Thursday also, my throat starts hurting. I get sick. Listen, I am flu? a Hurricane Irma survivor. By the way, you <laughs> left me Hurricane Irma. You left me in Florida, Hurricane Irma. You were gone. You were texting me the next day. My house is destroyed. You're like, can you go check on my house? I'm trying to just survive in Florida. I'm a Hurricane <laughs> Irma survivor. I'm a black widow bite survivor. I got bit by black widow on my foot. Almost lost my foot. Survivor. I am a cancer survivor. I am a two-time COVID survivor. And now, if I make it out of this, I believe that I'm a bird flu survivor. I really believe that I'm a bird flu survivor because that hit me like a ton of fucking bricks. I got sick over the weekend and we're trying to push through this thing, man. And, and you survived multiple enemas as a kid. Well, those are... You survived bullying, just intense bullying. You survived Here comes this all, all sorts again. of stuff. All sorts of stuff. I agree. You are a survivor. A lot of other people would have checked out a while ago. Like looked in the mirror and be like, no, not, not for me. Here I am. This is not... This is not what I signed up for. So congratulations on all your success. I'm glad that the $2 that I donate to the Jimmy Fund end up with somebody like you. 